check out this free video and make sure you hit like and subscribe. Hey, Brian Anson promo. He notes he and his wife got their engagement pictures here in Greenville, South Carolina. And Taz screams, why? <laughs> I missed that, but yes. Taz was, was in rare form this week. Yes. There's a lot going on with Taz. Then I don't think we know all of it, but there's something here where uh, when Darby comes out, I, I wrote down some of the stuff Taz says, but uh, uh, Darby comes out and Taz is like, he's been here since day one. Excalibur says, well, not since day one. About a month later, Taz is like, thanks, Excalibur, for getting the month right. So the crowd stand, chants, Brie, Brie, Brie. Excalibur knows they are big fans of cheese. Yeah. <laughs> I laughed. So Danielson starts talking about three years in AEW and being present for the big moments. A thank you, Brian chant breaks out. And it dies off and he says, you know, there are some moments I'll never really understand, but thank you. Because <laughs> he did nothing really to indicate, to like, entice that response. Talks about promising his daughter he would stop wrestling full time. I promised my family the AEW contract I signed would be the last I ever signed, and that contract ends tomorrow. And when I say the crowd gasped, they screamed. Yeah, they screamed in horror when he said that his contract, which is kind of funny because, you know, I watched this show, and it's very clear that Tony Khan lives and dies on Twitter. And his presumption is that these fans know everything about everything. They know everything that's going on. And I, I watched the show, and it's clear he believes that. You know, somebody mentioned here that the uh, finish of that Willow match was a callback to, I guess, when Stat Leonard turned heel. She used, I'm like, no one remembers that, okay? Nobody. 1% of the audience remembers that random callback. 1% of the audience and Tony Khan. When Brian, when Brian Danielson announced that his contract expired today, this isn't breaking news. I mean, it, we talked about it on Observer Radio. Dave had it in the Observer. None of these fans had any idea. They were shocked that his contract expired the next day, and he had promised his family he would never sign another long-term contract again. So that's the kind of thing where I think that might be good to pay attention to your audience and realize that maybe they're not quite as hardcore as you presume all of them are. Mm. But anyway, they had no idea. Shocked. They were, in fact, shocked. He notes he has not won the AEW championship yet. His last shot is at Wembley at All-In. His doctors and family do not want him to wrestle. But he vows to be present for that moment, and with his mind, body, and soul, he will go all-in. So Swerve comes out, puts Brian over for being so great, but says he is better. This belt is not an achievement award. It shows you are, or not a participation award. It shows you are the best in the world, and I am the best in the world. You lost to Osprey. I beat him. You lost to the Elite. I beat them. Last year, I competed it all in while you were too broken down to even fly to London. You will not be walking out of all in as champion, and you may never walk again. And so Brian says, I have a promise for you. If I do not win the AEW World Championship, I will never wrestle again. Crowd is actually less shocked at this than they were the first one about the contract, but they were still shocked. Swerve is taken aback, but Ryan repeats it, makes it clear it's title versus career. He offers a handshake, and Swerve accepts. But don't keep that promise to me. Keep it to your family. Hell of a segment. And uh, you mentioned last week Brian had his work cut out for him. I am. Well, maybe he knew this was coming, but uh, it's here now. Well, you know, they, uh, they made the big uh, stipulation there. And, uh, you know, as we've been talking about for a while, Danielson's winning in Wembley. And uh, I figured that's where they were going. After that, I guess we'll see. Is he going to do a short-term title reign? Drop it into coma? Is he going to uh, continue through the end of the year? He's never really given a date as to when he will no longer be a full-time performer. You know, he's never stated he's never wrestling again. He's stated the exact opposite. He wants to wrestle till he's like 70. But he's not going to wrestle full-time. He just wants to have fun doing matches. So I wonder how long he will continue to wrestle and defend that title before he drops it to somebody. And who will he drop it to? Back to Swerve? Who's he put over in the end? That is what I would assume. I back, don't know. Back to Swerve and Tacoma. But uh, we shall see. This Swerve, total heel here. Oh, yeah. This whole thing was just so bizarre. Because he was a total heel, 
after they went to so much trouble to finally turn him babyface, after people wanted him to be babyface for like six months, now he's just a total heel, and Brian's a total babyface, until Brian goes backstage, at which point he becomes a total asshole. I don't know what's going on. It is very strange sometimes. The announcers are taken aback by all this. They don't really know how to react. They throw it to Renee, who tries to interview Brian, but is very quickly interrupted by Jeff Jarrett and company. They're very excited about all this. That's how you go all in, they say. But Danielson's not happy with them. If you want to see if I'm all in, fight me next week on Dynamite. And I got a bad feeling about this. Because whatever finish they have planned for Wembley Stadium, I do not want Jeff Jarrett and his wacky crew involved. That seems like a downturn in the worst possible way. The weirdest and also the best trios team I may have ever seen in my life. Roderick Strong and Roosh and the Beast Mortos. And yes, there's a real team versus the conglomeration of Mark Briscoe and Tomohiro Ishii and Orange Cassidy. I like how you always roll your R I don't know, I like on to. Tomohiro. So this match was absolutely awesome. Yes. And this Beast Mortos, I mean, we've been talking forever. Like, he's so great. He never wins. He just goes out there to have great matches and lose. Like, can we finally do something with this guy? So they choose South Carolina to put over the Beast Mortos. Nobody in South Carolina cares about the Beast Mortos. They're just watching him. And uh, they did give him his big win. He pinned Mark Briscoe, so there's going to be a Ring of Honor title match there. But I can tell you that they taped Collision tonight. In Texas. Mm-hmm. Guess it was fucking crazy over. Uh, are you going to tell me the Beast Mortos? The Beast Mortos apparently was so over in Texas. So, uh, I don't know. Maybe I would have done it on that show. But they did it here. It's on Dynamite. He got his big win. This match was awesome. They had a great, great party match. Yes. With a lot of bull. First, Orange and Mortos had a bull fight. Then Mortos killed him. We had the Man Bull versus the Stone Pit Bull. And then the Pit Bull versus El Toro Blanco. And also the Sussex, Sussex County Chicken was in there as well. So, she is doing Stone Pit Bull stuff. And Taz, noted short, tough guy himself, says, nothing hurts this guy. It's amazing. Like he's sarcastic about it. Had to bug up his ass about that for a while. Uh, it is a huge party match, and then Mortos comes back, destroys Briscoe. I've seen this move before. I forget what it's called. It's the back suplex into a pile driver. I think uh, Chuck Taylor used this, actually. But he had this move, and he pinned him. And yes, I said it was time for the Beast Mortos to get some wins. He pinned the Ring of Honor champion. That is That qualifies as a big win. And they cut to uh, Orange Cassidy, who's tending to Mark Briscoe. I don't know what Mark said, but I can tell you that Orange could not stop laughing here in defeat. Finally, he cracked. He did, actually. That does not happen very often. The thing that was great about this match was everything. I was going to say the wrestling? We had we got to see Ishii versus Mortos, a match I never realized I needed to see until I saw it. Right. Ishii versus Roosh, where you do roll your R's. You should. Mark Briscoe versus Roosh. Also Toro Blanco. I fucking was just... God, there's so many matches I want to see. Yeah. <laughs> You're not wrong. Most of them involving Mortos. But anyway, yes, that was tremendous. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button, and you'll never miss a video again.